let us now examine one more distribution function, the T or so-called student distribution. Student distribution is somewhat similar to the normal distribution in that it is also characterized by a mean value and the standard deviation. But in addition to these two, it is also characterized by the number of degrees of freedom, which makes it different from the normal distribution function. When do we encounter student distribution? The student distribution is encountered, first of all, in all of those cases where we use mean values. So, whenever we carry out repeated measurements of the same quantity, and we use the mean value of those repetitions, the mean value also is a random quantity, and also obeys a distribution function. And the mean value of normally distributed values is distributed according to the student distribution. And let us go for a moment back to the normal distribution. We have examined that quite carefully. And we have discovered that these probabilities here are quite important because they set for us the coverage probabilities of the different uncertainties. So, for example, standard uncertainty has the coverage probability of roughly 68%, and K2 expanded uncertainty has the coverage probability of roughly 95% if the result is distributed according to the normal distribution. When I explained that, I already mentioned that there will be cases where this 95% will not hold if we use K2 expanded uncertainty. And actually, one of the main reasons that it does not always hold is the student distribution. And let us see how it is done. And let us see what the number of degrees of freedom means. So, the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of parallel measurements minus one. So, if the mean value is obtained from 101 measurement, then the number of degrees of freedom is 100. If from 11 measurements it's 10, if from 6 measurements it's 5, and if it is obtained from 3 measurements only, then the number of degrees of freedom is 2. Now, the student distribution has an interesting property that whenever the number of degrees of freedom approaches infinity, the student distribution approaches the normal distribution. And for all practical cases, we can say that, let's say, from 50 to 30 <coughs> measurements give us distribution function which is almost indistinguishable from the normal distribution. Therefore, the normal distribution curve here, which corresponds to 100 degrees of freedom, can be regarded as the normal distribution. Therefore, the student distribution curve here, which is obtained from 101 measurement, can be regarded as the normal distribution. But now, as the number of degrees of freedom decreases, which is the consequence of lower number of repeated measurements, lower number of parallel measurements, the shape of the distribution function changes. And the shape changes interestingly. So you see here in the center, the intensity decreases so that the probability of the true mean value being here decreases somewhat. But at the same time, the tails the tails become higher and higher, more powerful. Therefore, we can say that the probability, to some extent, is flowing away from the middle into the tails. And this is what causes that if our result is distributed according to the normal distribution, then K2 uncertainty can be 
uncertainty with much less probability than 95%. And we can look at it this way. If it is the normal distribution, then the area of this part here plus the area of this part here is roughly 4.5%, which is the probability that remains outside of this 95.5. But we see that as the number of degrees of freedom decreases, the tail gets more and more and more intense, meaning the area here gets larger and larger. Therefore, whenever we have lower number of degrees of freedom, the probability that we can achieve by the K2 expanded uncertainty becomes lower than 95%. It can be 93, 92, even 85% if the number of degrees of freedom is small. Now, interestingly, as we will also see and comment on, on, in some of the examples, usually our measurements results are distributed neither normally nor according to the student distribution. Their distribution usually is the convolution of different distributions. And as I have been explaining already, whenever our measurement result is influenced by many different input quantities, then if each of those input quantities has their own distribution function, then if the number of those quantities or influencing factors approaches infinity, then the distribution function approaches the normal distribution. So that if a measurement result is influenced by many, many factors, then usually we can assume that it is distributed normally. In reality, however, very often it happens that there is one, two or three strong influencing factors and the remaining ones are not so strong. And the, in such a case, the strong factors determine the shape of the distribution function of the output quantity. And if one of those strong influencing factors has T distribution with low number of degrees of freedom, then our result will be distributed according to a convolution of normal and T distribution. And in such a case, the K2 uncertainty corresponds to coverage probability, which is less than 95%. In practice, such situation most often occurs if there is an important and influential input quantity which is obtained as mean value of, let's say, three, four or five measurements. So if three, four or five measurements are averaged into a mean value, and this mean value has an important influence on the measurement uncertainty, then we can be quite sure that the result is distributed not according to purely normal distribution, but by a mixed distribution, a convolution of the normal and the student distribution.